When we look at the moon, we ask ourselves many questions like Is there life on it? Is it made of cheese? But most importantly, can we just nuke the absolute living shit out of it? In 1945, a group of researchers in Los Alamos were about to test their new doomsday weapon that would unleash power of atom itself onto the world. At some point, some of the more reasonable ones among them asked, wait, can't we accidentally ignite the atmosphere and kill all living things on the planet? And the rest were like, eh. was all fine and dandy, the atmosphere did not catch on fire, so in the coming years humanity got much more comfortable bombing random places for shits and giggles, and nowhere else was this more prominent than in the biggest dick measuring contest in history, the Cold War. On the opposing sides of the table, pun intended, we had our two familiar rivals. On one hand, US, on the other hand, Soviets. Each one of them eager to show the other who is the real superpower on this planet. At first, they were primarily doing it through a series of proxy wars, like the one in Korea, but those endeavors quickly turned out to be not quite as successful as both sides have hoped. They needed another way to demonstrate just how long their collective peepee -pee was. It needed to reach the space itself. The Soviets were initially ahead in this context, successfully launching Sputnik into orbit in 1957, closely following it with Yuri Gagarin's first flight in 1961. The US, seeing the success of their rival, could not let it stand. However, losing the space race so far, the US needed to one-up the Soviets in style. And the crucial element of that stylish victory would be the moon. Now, while putting a human on the moon seemed like an obvious choice for the next stage of the space race, they were lacking the actual means to get people there. Time being of essence, they needed something that would look just as convincing. They needed something... flashy. And what would you know? The US Air Force, as it happens, had just the solution. Their plan, codenamed Project A119, was to basically launch a nuke-carrying missile towards the moon and then detonate said nuke on the Terminator line. The explosion of the warhead would allow them to study closely the geological formation of the moon and... Mm, come on, that's the excuse of a second grader caught stealing cookies from a jar in the kitchen. They just wanted to blow shit up. Thing is, detonating the bomb on the Terminator line would allow the dust cloud from the explosion to be conveniently illuminated by the sunlight, making it visible from Earth with naked eye. Effectively, that would mean a giant middle finger to the Soviets all the way from the moon. So the people responsible for the project eventually compiled their prep material and showed it to their higher-ups in the US Air Force, and said higher-ups were basically... Um... What is wrong with you? Somehow, in a display of common sense so rare during the Cold War, the higher-ups realized that perhaps it was not the best idea to launch a new carrying missile with untested technology above your own country, potentially dropping it on your own citizens. Secondly, remember, the goal of sending humans to the moon was still on the table, meaning you should probably not cover the moon with radioactive fallout if you plan to send your astronauts there in a couple of years. And lastly, but also very importantly, perhaps if you want to ever find extraterrestrial life, it may make more sense to send humans before the nukes. In 1996, the beloved astrophysicist Carl Sagan famously said, The significance of a finding that there are other beings who share this universe with us would be absolutely phenomenal. It would be an epochal event in human history. That is very ironic, considering that Carl Sagan uh, was actually one of the people that worked on Project A119. I guess uh, one way to answer the question on the existence of extraterrestrial life on the moon or elsewhere is just to make sure that the answer to that question is a definitive no. Luckily for Carl Sagan and the rest of us, the project, as metal as it sounds, never actually came to fruition. The nuke 
in turn was eventually swapped for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. A pretty solid substitution, I would say. And that's it for today's story. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you also do not want to nuke the moon. And don't forget to check my previous video about a killer plant that people have accidentally spread across multiple continents and which is now a ticking ecological bomb.